I'm going to show you how you can add one of these beautiful landscape pillars to your landscape in three easy steps. Hey, hi, Glenn here at the workshop at the garden. I've been installing landscapes, designing landscapes for over 30 years now, and we are at the Gardens of Castle Rock, the wedding venue that I get to create and design and build things at. We're going to be adding one of those beautiful concrete pillars right here on the fireplace patio. Now we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about design here because that's a whole big fun mushy topic, feely topic to talk about. But what you'll find is these concrete pillars work really great to accent areas, kind of help create the space. Um, so that's why I'm adding them around the fireplace. They also work great at ends of driveways, ends of sidewalks, all kinds of places like that. Okay, step one. Step one is really easy. It's called planning and prep. Now planning is different than designing. Designing, like I said, is that mushy fun stuff of figuring out where it goes. We've already decided where our new pillar is going to go, so we're going to start the planning. We're going to get the materials ready and we're going to stage everything so it goes easy. In planning, one of the things that we do want to have, this is also a little design, we want to talk about how tall it's going to be. We're using the concrete blocks that are modular. We'll take a look at them in just a second, but they're four inches tall. So it works really easy to work in increments of four inches. I like pillars that are right around 30 inches. And so I'm gonna be doing nine courses of block in the pillar that we're gonna make. Sometimes you can do them a little lower at two feet and some a little bit higher at three and a half. Once you get up to four feet, they start to get a little too high for the design, but that's something you'll have to figure out there. So each layer in one of these takes four blocks. So I'm going nine courses, so I'll need 36 block. I'm going to need some type of cap unit. And then I also, which is a little different than most instructions, I like to put a couple pieces of concrete, some caps or pavers or retaining wall block down as what I'm going to call the footing or the base. So as I mentioned, the planning part is getting all of your uh, materials together. So let's take a look at the materials we're going to be using. These are some extra cap units. They're three inches thick. They're going to work perfect for the base. I'll show you that when we get there, but we're going to set those for level. These are the block that I'll be using. Now these happen to be Borgert. I think every concrete block manufacturer out there will have this modular block. They are four inches thick right here, eight inches deep and 12 inches across, which makes them perfect increments of four inches so you can work and put them any way that you want. But as I mentioned, nine courses high, four per course. I have 36 blocks here. Down in the pails here, I have some crushed rock. That's gonna be our base. We're gonna put in about three inches and I will be using a little bit of sand. So I just have some very simple wash sand. I will point out that it's a different size of sand. So using mortar sand, masonry sand, or playground sand is not advisable. We want those different sizes of aggregates in there. Cap units, you can use natural stone, but I'll also be using this uh, poured concrete cap. It'll has a little bit of a slope to it, a little bit of top. Very nice looking uh, cap unit for this. I also, We'll be using some adhesive, so get some adhesive. It doesn't matter what kind. I like the SRW, works really well. But any landscape, concrete block, liquid, something or another is going to work. And we'll talk more about this, but you need a little piece of conduit and some steel wool. I'll show you what that's for when we get ready to install. All right, continuing on in our planning and prep, which is step number one, we want to organize all of our tools and get them all out. Trust me, I don't start every single project like this. If you know me, I don't. All right, but let's take a look at what we have. We have a couple shovels. I got a spade right here, a shovel, a rake. This is a hand tamper. We're going to use that to pack the base down. You're going to need a level, some type of square, a nice rubber mallet that helps just to tap some things into place. A tape measure, probably the most important thing you need. Tape measure, maybe the level. You can have an argument about that. Leave a comment down below if you think the tape measure 
or the level is more important. Um, a little hand trowel, a couple chisels, a driving maul, and a cock gun that matches the size of your tube of adhesive. Don't forget the safety glasses. And last but not least, we need a wheelbarrow. There we go. All right, let's get on to step number two. Step number two is excavating and getting the base ready. Now excavating sounds like you need a big, huge machine. No, we are just using our shovel. What I did, and this is the base that I'm putting in. I, those are the four caps. They're three inches thick and they're about 30 inches square. And that's gonna be my base. What that's gonna help do is spread the load of the pillars out a little bit more. When you do an installation like this, it always has the chance of just tipping a little bit. This makes a big difference. It's not gonna tip the first year, but over time, five, six, eight years, you'll start to develop a little bit of a lean, which isn't a big deal because they're modular and you'll be able to go right back in and fix it. But this makes it a lot better having a bigger footing, spreading it all out. We're aiming for three inches of crushed rock underneath our three inches of footing block. So that's a total of six inches, tough math here. And we want the first block to be about an inch uh, below the surface so it doesn't look like it's sitting up on top. So what we'll end up doing is using our level and we're just gonna set our level right on our pavers. And once we dig out a little bit, we'll be able to take our tape measure and just measure down that uh, seven inches. And you can see I'm already at three inches, so I don't have to excavate all that much. Let's get this dug out and then we'll go from there. So two important things to keep in mind when you are excavating. One is always do a locate and a one call so you know where the utilities are. Even if you've built the whole place and know where every single line, private and public is, you're supposed to do a one call locate. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, number two on keeping this in mind, that this crushed rock that extends past the paver patio, it's there for a reason. So don't excavate, don't dig that out, don't disturb that at all. Especially you irrigators out there that wanna put your irrigation head right next to the concrete paver patio. Pet peeve, if you don't know why, check out this video. <laughs> I put a little uh, card up there that talks about the edging along the paper patio. Well, step two is complete now. We have our pavers, our caps, our concrete footing blocks all in place. Now, what you saw me do is I put the crushed in, I added some water. Water acts as a lubricant and it helps it all get nice and tight and packed in. You can put too much water on, but not really, because it will always drain out at some point. Sometimes if you think you've done a little too much water, just stir it up, mix it up like I did. That distributes that moisture evenly through the crushed. And then I use the hand tamper, and that's all we need here. We don't need a jumping jack, reversible plate, sheep's foot, 
packer, just a nice hand packer will get you what you need. I put the sand down on top and again I wet that sand down. That just allows that just to get nice and tight. A little hand pack with uh, my trowel to level that all out and then I set the blocks in there after I leveled it. Used the level itself to kind of get it real close once the blocks went in. Yeah, I spent some time. This is where you want to spend your most time hammering and banging and getting it level all the different ways. Another thing is, well, you know what? It's time for step three, because we're going to start to assemble, and that's going to be the important thing. So now it's time for step three, and that's going to be assembling the pillar on top of this. Now you'll notice I'm not right up next to the paver, nor will the pillar be right next to the pavers. You don't need it, or for that matter, you don't want it right next to the pavers. You want a little bit of space, you want the cap, you want it to sit in there. So somewhere between four to six to even eight inches away, I'm going to probably be right at about six inches away from the pavers, and it'll be perfect. All right. Let's get some block over here and set it up. I know that you are having a hard time right now. So this is where the assembly starts. Uh, the base is level, so it's just basically stack and go. We're doing four to a level. They're 12 inches, eight inches, so 20 inches in a square heading up. I'm setting six inches off the patio. And what I'll do with just some type of square is when I get it all set, I'm going to come in and just double check as we go up. Now, this first one, I'm just getting the layout. We are gonna come back and put just a dab of adhesive underneath this. We don't need this big, huge honking pile of adhesive. The stuff is amazing. Plus the reality is friction and the weight is gonna keep it in place for the most part. So we're just putting a little bit of adhesive in there, probably more than an insurance than anything. Now I did um, on this one here, chip a little bit off right there, split some off. I'm going to be putting in a piece of conduit uh, for future, drops in for future lighting I'm gonna cover that in another video if you think you never ever are gonna want landscape lighting you're wrong it's amazing but I'm not gonna cover it in this video even if you don't think you're gonna do it take the two seconds and the three dollars to put a little elbow 90 degree bury it in there and then you'll have it there for the future so you don't have to dismantle the whole pillar to add landscape lighting when you go, God, we really should have put landscape lighting in. Anyways, now that this is all set up, I'm gonna square it up and I'm gonna start stacking this baby up. up now something to remember is that that adhesive while it's setting up still acts kind of like a little slide a little lubricant so these will still move around a little bit you saw me with the the big framing square kind of square it up get that look but most importantly step back and take a look at it since that was perfectly level these are made as level as man can make something uh, 
I didn't even put the level on there because I know that I'm level by the time I get up here. The little bit of adhesive spreads out. It's equal all the way around and we're going to come up. These are weathered, which means they've been tumbled, so they have a rustic look. So we are not looking for perfect. That little bit of undulation there adds to the overall character. It needs the look square, straight, plumb. That's important. And we've got that. I'm going to take a little time, put some of the soil back in here, spread the mulch, and then I'm going to get some help putting the cap on. So the last part of step three in the assembly was putting the cap on. Now what you notice that I didn't do is I didn't put any adhesive, there's no glue right now, down on the cap. I'm going to be coming back and doing landscape lighting on this pillar. I will do a whole separate video on how to do lighting on a pillar like that, so look for that. Uh, if I wasn't doing lighting on it, I probably would put a couple little dabs of glue on there and I might even wait. Uh, till a later point. Caps are heavy, so make sure you get someone to help. Thank you, Heidi, for uh, lifting one side of the cap on there. But there you go, that's what they look like. Now you can see down here, we're six inches away from the patio and it just looks perfect in there. It's not too close, it's not there. It has a nice feel. Once we get the, we get the lights in here, it's gonna look super, super nice. Give you an idea of what lights look like. That's what they look like right there. And it's just gonna be a really nice addition to the whole patio area here. Uh, the other, I don't even know. I kind of measure, I didn't measure, I just use my fingers right now. If we were setting it permanently, we would measure to make sure that we were equal on each side around there. But wow, that looks good. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for checking out this video about installing a concrete landscape pillar. Do appreciate it, and I really appreciate it when you subscribe to the channel, follow along, give the video a thumbs up, all of that stuff's really appreciated. Hey, Glenn here at the workshop at the gardens. Until next time, enjoy. Enjoy.